friends from Ethiopia and Syria in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honor, and I love you. I have people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, from, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold, leave my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed in me. The word of the Lord. Do not stand for the gospel. Well, the gospel for this morning is taken from the gospel of Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We are in the prayer today. We thank you, loving God, that although we may not be very wise or even very faithful, that you have come to us. You have come to us in the life and the ministry and the very being of Jesus, your beloved Son. And now we have come to that same watering place that Jesus came. And we follow this Jesus, your beloved. So teach us to pray for each other in this church not thinking that some have a faith too strong to need our prayers or others too shallow to deserve our prayers. Help us to pray. And in our prayers, let there be light and hope. Let there be the gifts of faith and love and joy and the gifts of peace. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Well, it's uh, still close to the first of the year, right? And uh, usually, uh, towards the beginning of the year, uh, we take a little inventory of our lives, right? We're, we're able to do a little reflection, or at least when we turn the, the calendar over from December to January, we think about that, and we might even think about uh, the year past. And uh, if we do a little inventory, we, we might think about our hardships. We might think about the disappointments that came our way during that year. But when we turn the calendar over, when we, when we turn the calendar over to a new year, we have expectations that, uh, and, and a hope. We have expectations and a hope that things are going to be better for us, right? So we're able to do a little inventory uh, of our lives, and, and we try to measure those lives uh, sometimes during this time of the year as well. That leads us to questions. Questions kind of like, well, is life turning out the way that I wanted? Is my life turning out the way that I had hoped, even the way that I had planned? We ask questions like, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Or we ask questions, do I need to make some changes? Do I need to make some changes in my life in order to become happier, in order to become more fulfilled in my life? And uh, usually, uh, these, these questions lead us to establish something. And those are called New Year's resolutions, right? Resolutions. We, how many of you have made or attempted to make a New Year's resolution 
this year? Just raise your hand. Well, you've given it up all together. No, no New Year's resolution. Okay, all right. Well, praise be to God. I guess we're all done.
They only experienced disappointment after disappointment. There was always the expectation, though, that was there. But then the medical test came. Expectation. And then the miscarriage. Expectation and then long periods of waiting and hoping. Expectation and expectation. And then only disappointment and disappointment for them. And then one day the doctor called them into his office. As they sat down, the doctor folded his hands on his desk and he leaned toward them saying, Well, it is true. You cannot get pregnant. He said, You cannot get pregnant. Because you are pregnant right now. And they were filled with a joy that simply was indescribable. They were filled with this joy that just brought them ecstasy. And they could not wait to return home and to tell their family, to tell their friends that were waiting for this news as well. They wanted to share their good news with their pastor, with members of their church. And so months passed, and a beautiful baby girl was born. And she was an answer to their prayer. She was a miracle. She was their blessing. But soon after, they called the church, and they talked to the pastor, and they said to the pastor, you know, pastor, we have decided that we want to put our little girl up for adoption. They wanted to put their girl up for adoption. Well, Jesus came and stood by those waters of the Jordan. Jesus just kind of showed up there in that place. And you know, that's how it is in all of the four Gospels. That's how all the four Gospels record the baptism of Jesus. He just shows up. He just shows up amongst the, the people. He's just like everybody else. Jesus, the Messiah, the one for whom John was preparing, Jesus, the Messiah, the one whom John said would be so much more powerful than he, he just shows up amidst the other people, and he's baptized. And Jesus did not make a big deal of his baptism. He did not preach as he waited. He did not call any attention to himself. Jesus just stood there waiting, and then after it happened, he, he stood there and watching above, and he listened to God's voice. He didn't pay attention to himself, but he did enter into baptism, a baptism that he did not have to enter into, because Luke tells us it was a baptism for the forgiveness of sin. It was a baptism for repentance, for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus didn't have to be baptized, but he chose to be baptized. He chose to take our side. God chose to take our side. Not content to be separate from us, but desiring God himself, desiring to be with us, to join us, to be one with us in all that we are and all that we do, to join us, even with all of our expectations, fulfilled or unfulfilled, our expectations that are met or are unmet. Remember the couple who waited years in expectation, waiting to have their own child, and then deciding to put that child up for adoption? When they called the church, what the couple's real wish was that the child would be baptized. They simply called it an adoption. They wanted their child to be adopted into the love and the care of the church. They wanted their child to be adopted into the very hands of God. So baptism for them was indeed an adoption. So here's the question. To whom do our children belong in the first place? To whom do they belong? And for that matter, to whom does each of us belong? We belong to God. I belong to God. You belong to God. We all belong to God. A great theologian named Margaret Wise 
Brown, she wrote a book, it's a children's story, and some of you probably remember it. It's called The Runaway Bunny. The Runaway Bunny. Let me just read some of it for you. Once there was a little bunny that wanted to run away, so he said to his mother, I am running away. And if you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream and swim away. Well, if you become a trout in a fish stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman and I will come fishing for you. Well then, said the little bunny, I will become a rock on a mountain high above you. If you become a rock on a mountain, then I will become a mountain climber, and I will climb to wherever you are. And so the story goes on. I will be a bird and fly away. Then the mother says, I will be a tree for you to come home to. The little bunny says, I will be a sailboat and sail away. The mother says, then I will become the wind that fills your sails. And there were other attempts to leave, all to no avail. And finally the little bunny said, all right, I might as well just stay here and be your little bunny. And so he did. And his mother said to him, have a carrot. Have a carrot, because you are my little bunny. And so he did. You know, from Scripture, the psalm says almost the same thing. Where can I flee from your presence, O oh God? Where can I flee from your spirit, the psalmist asks. And the answer, there is nowhere that we can go where God will not be with us. Nowhere. Because you belong. God. You 